Hello students, instead of reading you a story today, I have actually got this book by Shel Silverstein, who is quite a well-known poet who wrote poems especially for children. And I thought I would read you some poems because coming up very soon you're going to have a lesson on poetry and I just wanted to share with you some of my favorites. The title of this book is Where the Sidewalk Ends, and I'm only going to read, I think, five or six very short poems to you. The title of the first poem is Invitation. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer. If you're a pretender, come sit by my fire for we have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in, come in. This next poem is called Magic. Sandra's seen a leprechaun, Eddie's touched a troll. Lori danced with witches once, Charlie found some goblins gold. Donald heard a mermaid sing, Susie spied an elf, but all the magic I have known I've had to make myself. This next poem is called Listen to the Mustn'ts. Listen to the mustn'ts, child. Listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the never haves. And then listen close to me. Anything can happen, child. Anything can be. This next poem is called Smart. And I picked it because it talks a little bit about money and coins, like we've been studying in math class. So I thought that you might find it funny. My dad gave me one dollar bill because I'm his smartest son. And I sh swapped it for two shiny quarters because two is more than one. And then I took the quarters and I traded them to Lou for three dimes. Guess he didn't know that three is more than two. Just then along came old blind Bates and just cause he can't see, he gave me four nickels for my three dimes and four is more than three. And I took the nickels to Hiram Coombs down at the seed feed store and the fool gave me five pennies for them. And five is more than four. And then I went and showed my dad and he got red in the cheeks. He closed his eyes and shook his head, too proud of me to speak. Good thing you guys have learned all about coins and that can't happen to you. This poem is called Where the Sidewalk Ends. There is a place where the sidewalk ends and before the street begins, and there the grass grows soft and white and the sun burns crimson bright, and there the moon bird rests from flight to cool in the peppermint wind. Let us leave this place where the smoke blows black and past the dark street winds and bends, past the pit where asphalt flowers grow, we shall walk with a walk that is measured and slow and watch where the chalk white arrows go to the place where the sidewalk ends. Yes, we'll walk with a walk that is measured and slow and we'll go where the chalk white arrows go for the children they mark and the children they know the place where the sidewalk ends. And then this poem right here is one of my very favorite poems. It's called Lester. And when I was looking for this job at Greenmount, I had to come teach a lesson. And I came and taught Miss Meg's class. And at that time, Oscar and Brody were in Miss Meg's second grade class. And so they got to hear this poem, which is one of my very favorite poems. Actually, Leela was there too, now that I think of it. She was in the third grade though. And I read this poem to those students before I got the job. And now, although we're kept away from our classroom, we're all still together. 
and I'm your teacher, and you're my students, and I'm going to read the poem to you. Lester. Lester was given a magic wish by the goblin who lives in the banyan tree, and with his wish he wished for two more wishes. So now instead of just one wish, he cleverly had three. And with each one of these, he simply wished for three more wishes, which gave him three old wishes plus nine new. And with each of these 12, he slyly wished for three more wishes, which added up to 46, or is it 52? Well, anyway, he used each wish to wish for wishes till he had 5 billion, 7 million, 18,034. And then he spread them on the ground. He clapped his hands and danced around and skipped and sang and then sat down and wished for more and more and more. They multiplied while other people smiled and cried and loved and reached and touched and felt. Lester sat amid his wealth, stacked mountain high like stacks of gold. He sat and counted and grew old. And then one Thursday night they found him dead with his wishes piled around him, and they counted the lot and found that not a single one was missing. All shiny and new? Well, here, take a few and think of Lester as you do, because in a world of apples and shoes and kisses, Lester wasted his wishing on wishes. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed those poems as much as I do. I will talk to you very soon. Goodbye.